Today I want to talk about the Sonority 2019 launch event. Now the 2019 launch event was just in London, it was the second stop on the Sonology tour uh, of their 2019 launch of all their new products and services and all the announcements of what we're going to see in the latest version of DSM 7 released next year. There was some hardware and a lot of software. Now all the hardware I'm going to vaguely mention but I'm going to give them their own dedicated videos that you'll see very very soon. But for now I want to talk about the software more than anything. Now I've just got back from the show, so you have to forgive me all the oh, crazy energy. But first and foremost, DSM 7.0. It's the brand new disk station manager um, user interface. At the moment, we're on 6.2, and there's had, not even a beta has been released yet, but I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a beta very soon with DSM 7 next year being fully released at some point. Now, what have we got? I've got my notes behind me here. First and foremost, there's all these business and a few home-based application increases, but it's largely business and storage related. So let's go for the more easy, chewable things. For a start, the mobile phone application, DS Finder, is now not just a simple means to kind of access your NAS and find it on the, the network. With DS Finder now, you're gonna be able to completely set up a NAS from scratch. You're going to be able to stick the drives in, get the DSM installed and completely set up a NAS from beginning to end. On top of that, you can set up internet level access, you can install applications and have a whole range of things to access and set up your NAS for the very first time because of this whole changing way we access the internet and the priorities that more and more providers are giving towards mobile users. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. On top of that, there's a whole new login system that's going to come with DSM 7 in the form of using 3D barcodes. So the usual interface of logging in there with a username and a password is always going to be there. But also on top of that, the means of using a mobile phone with a DS Finder app and you go into the 3D barcode system, you have the barcode on the screen from a you know a, a desktop environment and use the phone to get login credentials on that device for individual users. There's lots of case scenarios. Do check out the NAS Compare article. It breaks down things a little bit more. Next, there was the Synology Premium Service, SPS. And this is a new enterprise-led service for those out there that really do take storage and stability very, very seriously. It's got um, a contact number that's dedicated just to these priority lines. There's a live chat system there that's gonna be completely accessible to those using this service. There's going to be a promised up to two hour response time maximum on any of your queries to let you know that this is being dealt with. And it's going to be available on XS and FS, that's Flash Station and their Enterprise Elite Level devices um, if you apply. Now, these are the devices that have already got five years of warranty and of course, the Synology replacement service where they will send a next day replacement to your unit. So this is all being put together for those users who really, really want full coverage. Once again, there wasn't a lot of details about the cost of SPS, but it will be an extra cost on top of the existing range from what I understand. Now, bring it back to storage, we can talk about the new accelerated RAID. Now in DSM 7.0, you're going to have the choice when rebuilding a device in the event of a RAID, you know, a hard, work, hard drive failure, where you have to use the parity and rebuild the drive. There's going to be a new means with which you can recover it using accelerated RAID. And what this does is instead of uh, rebuilding every single block on the hard disks, including the empty ones, so if you've got an 8 TB hard disk with 3 terabytes of data on it, you're still going to block all 8 TB. In this new accelerated data version, in this what's going to happen is, you'll only need to build the data you put on the drive. So if it was an 8TB with three terabytes, you're only going to have to rebuild three terabytes of storage on those drives while they're raided. It's going to depend on your capacity, 
but they use uh, uh, scenarios with 4 x 4 TB drives and it minimized 8 hours of rebuild time down to 3 hours. I hope all the graphics are on screen right now. So I am looking forward to testing them and holding them to their word on this RAID rebuild in the accelerated RAID. On top of that, moving, you know, staying in that area, I should say, this is business of failure protection. Now, for those that are aware, Seagate Iron Wolf have a health management system that's built into Synology NAS if you use them. So if you use a Synology NAS drive, you can access that user interface and check on the health of your drives and run individual tests. On top of that, you've got SMART, smart, that can do a periodic tests on your hard drive. This new version in failure protection is a smart system where it learns and, and you know there's lots of data that Synology have gathered in the past on their own test. Don't worry, it's not using your data, so I'll actually ask that question um, to ascertain little tiny clues, little indicators that a drive may fail. <clears throat> and failure protection will let you know way, way in advance um, if there is a problem with a complete failure anticipation by an anticipation based on that data. So they've got a success rate, they are saying, in not of nine in 10 drives. That's a 90% success rate. And if you do have a hot spare installed, you can manually select an option that's uh, dis disabled by default, so that if one of your drives starts showing indicators of there being a problem, it will automatically start moving the parity and cloning that, on that, cloning that slightly iffy drive by their indicators onto that hot spare drive, thereby technically never having to worry about a rebuild because that drive will just be a clone of the drive that's showing symptoms and there won't be a raid rebuild because that drive will just clone in the background and then you never have to worry about raid rebuild. It's fantastic, really. Now, sticking on the theme of storage, we can look at that application from last year, Synology Drive, and it's now going to support file streaming. This is something we've seen before. Um, but a lot of people get it mixed up with synchronization. Now, synchronization is the ability to have a folder or um, localized um, directory on your PC that synchronizes with a cloud on NAS system and thereby, therefore gives you um, or those files uh, that are on the cloud or the NAS uh, access on your local device. File streaming gives you a folder on your PC or Mac system and from there, you've got all the folders and all the files and everything there, but these files are kilobits inside compared with the megabits and gigabits there on the NAS or the cloud. And what happens is the more frequently these files are accessed, it will download those files in an intelligent manner. manner. Or you can force the system to download them as you see fit, which is pretty good too. But file streaming is something that's becoming increasingly popular because most users who store loads and loads of files on their NAS do it so they don't have to use up all the space on their localized device. And file streaming gives you the ease of localized file access that you get from synchronization without having to download every single file and have double copies using up all that space. Um, now there have been even more improvements in, in the field of uh, Synology's own CMS program that's been around for a few years. With this new improved user interface and control index, that covers more than 10,000 units up to that if it wanted us. 10,000 Synologies can be monitored by this one application. And from there, you can ascertain and check the firmware and the health of individual units and be selective about what does what, which one gets firmware, or do blanket ones where you can create rules where certain teams of devices get that. And the same thing goes with the health of devices to get monitored tailored alerts and application control one of these devices. So rather than have to go through each one one by one to do it, you can bulk them all together and action these things one by one. Now, carrying on, we can talk about Active Backup Suite. Now, I've talked about Active Backup before. There's lots of different versions there from Synology, and Synology are pleased to confirm that Active Backup Suite is going to be free. You're not going to have to worry about paying for it. There's lots of talk of licenses, and I'll be honest, they're the only ones out there that have this for free. Now, again, if you don't recall the other videos, Active Backup is this means where you can monitor multiple Windows PCs, servers, and other Linux-based devices all from one control deck. All of that, you can monitor them and action commands onto multiple servers from one user-friendly interface, as well as things like the duplication, um, um, localized backup, iSCSI backup, virtual machine backup, cloud-based uh, server backup, all of these can be done via that one interface. And this is something that other companies are charging hundreds, if not thousands of pounds for. And Synology are now rolling that in with DSM-7 
grass. It is definitely something to look into and I recommend you check out my videos on that very subject. Uh, one thing that did come up was the router. With the mesh router we talked about before, the MR2200 AC. It's now been confirmed that it is going to be coming out um, in early to mid October and it will be quite affordable as well and it will arrive at the same time as SRM 1.2 Synology Router Manager. Now, do check out my other video, but a lot of it's about profiles um, and registered control and Google's own safe uh, guards that can be installed on the device and there's a really nice user interface there and hopefully there's a graphic on the screen there for you otherwise do check out my video from back in the summer that was taken during Computex or check out the guide that now compares now uh, the router manager isn't just great for um, creating profiles and allocations of data and means of access but um, SRM is developed and looked after exponentially more than I think any other uh, management software for routers and devices. One of the examples they were trying to show was one with Crake. Now Crake or Crack, depending how you want to pronounce it, was this thing that was hitting a lot of Wi-Fi devices. It was a huge vulnerability um, and it took, they quoted, um, Apple 57 days to completely seal the, this exploit. It took Netgear 17 days to seal this exploit and some of you're quite proud to boast they did it in 24 hours. Now, there were loads of other things at this show. A lot of them are related to the hardware devices. We will talk about in another video the UC300. It's this great dual controller rack mount NAS. It's really the embodiment of this Synology high availability, SHA. We'll talk about the new 8-bay device, the 1819 Plus, and a brand new surveillance NAS that supports this great thing called Deep video analytics but otherwise that really was the Synology show there was more to this and again do check out the article from NAS compares below there is so much that happened at this show it, took, it went on for hours I've got loads of photos do check them out but otherwise do stay tuned for the videos regarding these new NAS devices and some more expectations for the rest of the year from Synology but otherwise thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time